Hello, section 4.4, the graphs of sine and cosine. Our question for the day is what do the graphs of sine and cosine look like? Before we begin that, I normally start the class with a warm up. Uh, it might be a good idea to pause the video and see if you can answer these two questions. Quite okay if you don't, but it helps to see what you already know and what you don't. All right, so let's complete the sentence. A function is periodic if what? If you said something about the values of a function repeating or go happening over and over again, that's exactly right. So a function is periodic if the values of the function repeat over a regular interval. That regular interval is called a period, thus periodic. Um, assuming we're measuring in radians, what is the period of sine of x? The period of sine of x would be 2 pi. And there's a few ways to explain why, but one of the best ways I like is by looking at the unit circle. We know that the on the unit circle, the values of sine are just the y values. So starting at an angle of 0, the sine is 0 and then one half, and then square root of two over two. And it keeps going as this angle goes up and around. Once the angle gets to pi over two, the sine values start to get smaller again, right? Smaller and smaller and smaller until you have a sine of zero when you have an angle of pi. And then as I go around the unit circle, then I've got negative sine values, more and more negative until negative one. And then they start increasing back up here until they get to zero. Now, that angle is an angle of 2 pi. And once I do that, I start repeating those same sine values over and over and over again as I go around the unit circle. So sine would be periodic with a period of 2 pi. Those y values happening over and over again as my angle goes around and around and around the unit circle. All right, what does this end up looking like then? That's the essential question for today. And for a sign, it ends up looking like this. I'm going to talk about some of these words up here in a minute. Uh, but if we look at this, sine starts at 0, right? Just like it did here. It started at 0 with an angle 0. Sine slowly increased, right? The y value increased until I had an angle of pi over 2. So there's pi over 2. And I had a maximum value of 1. And then my sine started decreasing, right? So those values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller until after pi radians, I had a y value of zero, right? So smaller and smaller and smaller until at pi radians is zero. And then you do the same thing as neg for on, on the negative side. Then the y value is negative up until three pi over two. I had a value of negative one. And then it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger until at two pi, I was at a y value of zero, and then those values just repeat. So that's what sine looks like. A couple of things. First, here's our definition of a periodic function, a function that repeats its values in regular intervals, right? Again, those regular intervals are called the period of the function. So a period of a function is just the length of one cycle. In the case of sine, it's two pi. And then that period repeats over and over and over again. The amplitude of a function is its maximum height as measured from equilibrium or the center of the wave. So this one has a maximum height of one. The amplitude is right here. That's a distance of one. Please note that that is the maximum height of, over the distance of the wave. So if I had a graph that was periodic, let's say it was like this, one, two, three, four. Let's say it started here at two and it went up to four and then back down to zero and up to four and back down to zero. This function here would have an amplitude of two because from equilibrium, that's right, that's center of the wave, that height is a height of two. Just because it may, makes it all the way up to a maximum value of four doesn't make the amplitude four. The amplitude is just this distance right there. All right. Let's start doing a few functions. Oh, characteristics to remember. So with sine of x, we already kind of talked about that one. Sine of x, the period is 2 pi. It has an amplitude of 1. And one of the big things to help remember sine is that it's kind of evenly divided into four parts. Sine starts at 0 and goes up to 1 and back down to 0 and down to negative 1. And then those values just repeat. Right? Cosine is very, very similar. Cosine's got a period of 2 pi. It also goes around the unit circle. It also has an amplitude of 1, right? On the unit circle, the biggest, the x value is going to get at 1. The biggest difference is when you start 
your unit circle at zero radians, you are looking at the x value and cosine starts with an x value of one. And then its values go up and down and just like, just like anything else. So with cosine, instead of starting at zero like sine does, cosine starts at one. But then it follows the exact same pattern as sine. From one, it goes down to zero, then down to negative one, then up to zero, then back up to one, and it just keeps repeating. So sine and cosine look almost identical. They're just shifted over. Sine starts at zero, cosine starts at one. All right, let's actually try a few functions. We're going to graph not just sine of x. We're going to graph three times the sine of 4x. To help us with this, we're actually going to figure out what the amplitude is and the period. So the amplitude for sine is normally 1. But this 3 right here, that's going to be a vertical stretch. It's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So it's going to take that amplitude that's normally 1, and it's going to multiply it by 3. I've got a new, new amplitude of 3. Right. For the period, period of sine is normally 2 pi. But with this function, I've got 4 times x on the inside. We might remember that that is a horizontal shrink. It shrinks it by a factor of 4 or 1 fourth. So the period is going to be 2 pi times the reciprocal of whatever number that is. So in this case, 2 pi times 1 fourth. 2 pi times 1 fourth is pi over 2. All right, so when I graph the function, I know sine starts at 0. So I'm going to start my function right at 0. But this time, when it goes up, it's not going to go up to a maximum value of 1. It's going to go up to a maximum value of 3, because the amplitude is 3. So it's going to go all the way up to 3, and then it's going to curve back down until it hits 0. And then it's going to do the same thing down here, but it's going to go to a minimum value of negative 3, back up to here. You'll notice I graphed the entire period of sine, but I didn't put any uh, units down here. And that's because my period is now pi over 2. So instead of trying to come up with a scale down here and then making my graph match it, I just did the graph and I'm going to make my scale match it. I'm going to say, I know this distance here is pi over 2 because I've got a full period of pi over 2 which means right here, that's going to be halfway between 0 and pi over 2. So that must be pi over 4. So this one, that's going to be halfway between 0 and pi over 4. So that must be pi over 8 right here. And right there, that'll be 3 pi over 8. And there's my graph. Sine doesn't just stop there. It does go on forever. If I wanted to continue it this way, I could. If I wanted to continue it that way, I could. Most of the times, it's going to ask you to graph at least one full period. Um, you could graph more if you like. All right, let's try one more. Find the amplitude and period of each function. All right, so amplitude of cosine is normally 1. However, I've got this number here. That's going to be a vertical stretch. So it's going to stretch it by 1 and a half. So times 1.5. I end up with an amplitude of 1.5. Many of you are going to be noticing I ignored that negative. Amplitude is a distance, so it can't be negative. But yes, that negative does have an impact. That negative number, if we remember, if we have a negative on the outside, that's a vertical flip over the x-axis. So I'm just going to make a note of here, note here that there is a vertical flip occurring for this function. All right, period again for cosine is normally 2 pi. Again, with period, that number is a horizontal stretch or shrink, depending on that number. The factor is just by multiplying by the reciprocal. If I flip 1 half, I get 2 over 1. So this is actually a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. 2 pi times 2 over 1 is 4 pi. So my period was 2 pi normally, but after multiplying by that 2, now I've got a period of 4 pi. All right, graphing this. This is cosine. I know cosine normally starts at 1, but two things have happened. My amplitude has changed to be 1 and a half, and it's been vertically flipped. So instead of starting at a positive 1, I'm going to start at a negative 1 and a half. And then cosine just does the same thing as sine. Goes down to 0, back up to the maximum. It's going to come up to 0, 
hit its maximum, come back down, and it's going to keep going on forever, right? This value, 1.5, right? That value is negative 1.5. There are my zeros. That's one full period from here to there, right? Started at negative 1.5, got back to negative 1.5. That's a period of four pi, so this has to be four pi. Now, it looks like my scale is a little bit off, but I, I'm going to be say okay with it. This is a sketch. This should be halfway between, so that should be two pi. If I did this sketch well, that should be halfway between as well, which is pi, and that should be three pi. Now it's a sketch, so I'm okay with that. If I wanted to make it look a little bit nicer, I certainly could, but I'm gonna leave that there. All right, your assignment is 4.4, three through seven odd, and 13 through 25 odd. Couple of notes, these ones just ask you to describe what's happening. Is it a vert vertical stretch? Is there, what's the amplitude? What's the period? So go ahead and just answer those questions through here. These ones you're actually being asked to sketch a graph of the function, so make sure you do that. Uh, there will be some questions that may ask about frequency. You don't have to worry about frequency, uh, but if you're curious, frequency is just one over the period of the function. See you later.